It's a grey Sunday afternoon, the boat is out of the water and Marion is out doing stuff with the kiddies. So I thought this would be a great opportunity to make a video about the Quatix 6 watch. The smartwatch that Garmin sent me earlier this year. I did a very silly unboxing video of it when I got it, but I did promise to do a more serious tech review. This is the first one I've ever done, so bear with me. But I really want to show you what this watch is all about, because it's a rather clever piece of kit. Just to mention as well, I'm going to put this up as a bonus video, so it's not going to replace a yacht tour. I'm going to put it up as well as the usual yacht tours. So if this is not your thing, stand by, there'll be a yacht tour along in a minute. Anyway, let's have a proper look at this. As I say, it is a rather nifty thing, and uh, it's taken me a little bit of time to get used to, but it's well worth taking a proper look at. So I'm going to set this camera up probably on a tripod, and we'll have a go. Okay, so here we go. This is the watch. Uh, I'm going to show you the box as well, because when I got this, now this one is the Quatix 6X Solar. There's a couple of different versions of this Quatix 6. The Solar version is a larger one. It's a 51 millimeter. As I say, that is the watch. And um, the reason for that is it actually has a solar panel built into here, which helps it charge when you're out on sunny days. There is a, another version, which is the non-solar, but still titanium, and that is a bit smaller, that's 47 millimeters, and then there's another version again, which is not the titanium, so it doesn't have this rather lovely bracelet. And I'm gonna show you in the box, actually, because this came with this strap, and when I did the unboxing video, I very foolishly said that this screwdriver that's also in was to change the strap over. It's not. This is really clever. That's the strap I've got on it. Now, when I tried to work out how to do this, I looked for a YouTube video, as I always do, and the video to change the strap was two seconds long, and I thought, that can't be right. <laughs> but it is. Watch this. There's little tabs on the back of here, and if I pull that, that's it. It's off. It's as easy as that. Let's take the other one off. It's a, it is a two-second operation. And then these fellows have a similar tab system, and they just clip on. There you go. So if you want that one on there, then you've got it. When I got the watch, I thought I'm definitely going to use this one because it's a nice soft material. But actually, I tried the titanium um, bracelet. And in fact, that screwdriver is so that you can adjust the size of it just by undoing these little screws on the side. I don't know if you can see them just there. And I really like this. It looks good and it, um, and it feels really comfortable. So I'm going to put that back on just by doing that. And, and we will talk about the watch. Now this is a very customizable watch, not just the bracelet, but also the display itself. Um, you can see the time permanently, you can see it's lit up there, but when you push this top button, that lights up the backlight, and when you're operating any of the functions, that is lit up, and it stays on for about five seconds. Now these buttons on the side here, they're pretty straightforward in actual fact. What you've got is the top button is the light on or off, and then these are menu buttons, we'll come to those in a minute. This is an in button, so when you're in a menu you can go into a sub-menu of this, and this is an out button so you can come out, and that will be much clearer as I go through how this works. We're going to start with this one. If we press and hold this one, now we can start customising all kinds of things. So this enter button here takes us into that menu. You can see it set the time at 10 past 10, so you can see all the displays nicely. What you can do now is you can scroll through here, and there's a whole load of different displays. That's a digital display, an analog display, and you can see how it changes. So you can set this up exactly how you want it. You can make it more elegant. You can lose the subdials. You can change the subdials to whatever you want them to be. Lots and lots of choice there. So you can basically choose whatever you like and then hit the enter button and you can, you've got that. You can then, however, customise it further because we go into that customise menu. Now you can change, for example, the dials. So if I go into dial and again scroll through the up and down buttons here, you can see how the background dial changes. If you go into that one, we can even change the hands. So if I hit the hands button, can you see how the hands are changing? So you can choose your own style of, of hands for the watch. So you can really set this up how you want it. You can even change the data, and that is how it displays, whether it's around the edges it is at the moment, or whether it's uh, what just data it's displaying. There's loads of stuff you can change there. And in fact, we can go a bit further. You can change each individual one. So now I can change just that, as you can see it going through there to different things. Hit that again. That's changing all the other ones, and again, you can then scroll through and change to whatever you want. Keep on going. You get back to there. And then, last one, 
accent color, if we hit this, actually it's not the last one, there's <laughs> one more. The accent color then is changing, I don't know how you can see that, but these little markers around the sides here are changing color. These little fellas here. Still more, we're going to then again, background color. And on this one now, we can actually reverse the color. Um, I don't want any of that, so I'm going to hit the back button. Save changes, no, because I've already got this set up how I want it. And then we'll go to come right out of that. There we go. Uh, ah, and I, <laughs> I have changed it. Not to worry. Okay, let's move on. So that's what that does. I'll set that back up as I had it before in a minute. If we just touch it once rather than touch it and hold it, we're now going into the uh, function menus. So there's a load of stuff on here. If I go through some of these, I'm not going to bore you with every single thing. Pulse Ox is an interesting one. That will actually monitor the oxygen in your blood flow. There's sensors on the back. I don't know how you can see that just there. And little LEDs that light up. They'll also check your heart rate and that kind of thing. We've got temperature on here. Oh, we've got sleep. I don't wear this at night, so there's no data. That measures stress. It's not showing anything at the minute because the watch is not connected with me. It needs to be worn for that to come up. Um, we can look at things like, we can go into my day, and then we can see how far I've walked today, and how intensely I've walked, um, how many floors I've climbed. I do a hill walk every day, so that's why this has got 85 floors of uh, steps. The actual number of steps I've done, calories burnt, that kind of thing. So that's monitoring that. If we hit the back button again, come out of that, we can go into heart rate. It's currently showing about 72, 73. Again, you need to be connected. I've got my finger on it at the minute, so it's connecting. This is a good one. This is compass. If we go into that, we've actually got a proper compass. Very clever. Come back out of that. Go up again. Calories burned. We've got a um, barometer. And again, if you go into this, you can see the changing of the pressure on there. Let's come back out. Go up. Altimeter. Fairly obvious. Um, notifications, we can go into here, and it will be telling us things like emails. There's a link to my telephone, so that's where it's getting this information from. Um, these are emails, uh, games that I'm playing. Um, so it's just messages that have come from my phone most recently. Let's come back out of that. Up again, my diary is on here. Oh. And again, we can go into that and, and review it. The weather is on here. Music controls. You can put music on here and control the uh, control the music from this. There's health stats on here. Steps. Let's go into that one. You can see what I've done today. And you can go through average days for walking. You can see I didn't walk very much at all on Thursday, but I've done pretty well the other days. Let's come back out. So an awful lot of information is on here. That's the walk I did today. Uh, sunrise and sunset, solar intensity, that's telling you how much battery charge it's had from the solar panel. You can see the bit where it's raised is where I was walking today when I was out and the rest of the time I've been indoors so it's not got much power. And uh, the last one, which I jumped past somehow, and the last one at the top there is battery condition, it's showing 13 days. Depending on how much you use the watch and uh, whether you've got the GPS on and that kind of thing, that varies. I'm finding I'm charging it about once every two or three weeks. So pretty good, and I think if you're out in the sunshine a lot more, of course, you get far more battery life out of it. So that is your various uh, widgets there, but if we come right out of that and come back to the watch front, this top button here takes us into a whole load of other areas. These are apps, in fact, so let's push that one. Let's stop my computer from doing that. There we go. Okay, on here, clocks. If we go into this, we've got a stopwatch on here, so we can go into the storage. Say this is the enter button to go into these things, and this is the back button to come out. So stopwatch is on here, we can start it. Uh, there's a lap button on here, so we can get a lap up and record laps like that. And then stop it with that top one, reset it, all dead straightforward. Um, and then back out of it with this back button. What else have we got on here? Loads of good things we've got. Um, oh, that's the light button. We've got timers, so you can do countdown timers, alarm, of course, you want an alarm clock. So that's all your various clock functions. Time zones are on here as well. I've got five of these set up. So I can see the time in different places. Miami, I wish. London. Cardiff, I'm not quite sure why Cardiff is in there. 
So places that I'm likely to go once we're able to travel properly again. Let's come back out of that one. And back out again. We'll get back to this menu. Maps are on here. These are pretty good. These are street maps. There we go. That's fairly zoomed out at the minute, but you can zoom in and out with these buttons on the side. Pan and zoom. Here we go. So if I hit zoom, yeah, you can see how you can zoom in on this now. So that is that one. It goes right down to street maps. Let's come back out of that. Um, boat. This is an interesting one because you can link this to your boat uh, through your... If you've got a Garmin uh, on your boat, it does this very easily. You can apparently adapt it to other navigation systems sometimes as well, but Garmin obviously is the, is the one it works with best. But you can monitor all your various boat things here, so distance that you've done, timing, um, speed. You can actually set these up, incidentally, to whatever you want them to be. So if that's not the display that you want, you can make it display other things. We're just going back to time of day there now and maps and so on. No heart rate because it's not on my wrist at the moment. Uh, anchor, you can go into an anchor watch facility. There's sailing uh, functions there. I don't know much about sailing, so I don't know what they do. But if we carry on a bit further, autopilot. If you've got a Garmin autopilot, you can link this watch to it and you can steer your boat from the watch. That's very James Bond. Uh, boat data, here we go. Again, you need to enable this with the, your systems on your boat. Um, tides, you can uh, set up tides. You need to do this through your phone. I'm not sure if I've got this one set up at the minute. No, I haven't. It's trying to work out where we are, and it can't because we're indoors. But uh, you can display tide information on there, fishing information. And all of these, you can delete or add these. So if you don't want some of these functions, I mean, for example, one of these is golf. I've never played golf in my life, so I've removed it. Stand-up paddleboarding. Um, we'll leave that on there for now. Walking, this is probably the one I use the most. So if we go into here, now this is telling you when you're walking, um, your heart rate at the top there, the pace that you're walking at, so uh, how long it's taking you to do each mile, the time you've been walking and the distance you've covered. But again, you can reselect these. So if you don't want those particular bits of information, you can choose others. Hit the back button, come out of that. Running, I don't think so. Hiking, I'm not sure what the difference is. Let's have a look. Hiking, okay. So that is just displaying things like your average speed that wasn't on the other one. Um, back out of that. You can get to track you. Uh, you can put waypoints in, you can navigate with it. And this one here, so you've got a bin, so you can ditch things that you don't use regularly. So if you go into this bin, this is the stuff that I don't use, that I've kind of tossed into the bin, so I don't see it every time. There's the golf one, for example. If you decided to take up golf, you can reinstate it, set it as a favourite, and it will go back to that top menu again. No. There we go. I'm not going to be playing golf. So that is that. Let's come back out of that. So there's lots in here that I don't use and I don't want to use, which is why they're in here. Um, if we come back out of this, that's, as I say, that's a little bin of things that we can add. Let's go down a bit further. So that is that little menu there. Let's hit that one there. Hit the back button. And there we go. That is pretty much covers it, I think, as far as the basics of it go. Anyway, I'm sure there's lots more that it will do if you get really into it. But it's actually a really useful device. It's the sort of thing that I thought I'll wear when I'm boating, but I probably won't use it much the rest of the time. But actually, I do. And I'm going to have to reset this now, and I? And get it back to the settings that I want. Here we go. Watch face. Let's see if I can find the one that I actually use. Uh, let's go back up here. There we go. This is the one I like. So enter that. Apply. There we go. So that's how I have it. So this is now showing the temperature here on the left, the barometer here on the right, the date is up the top, and my heart rate when it's on my wrist. There we go. That's now appeared at the bottom. So that's how I have it set up. But it's a really funky little watch. I like it very much. I like the fact it doesn't look like a smartwatch. I like the fact that I can read it even when it's not lit up. So I don't have to push the button every time I want to see what the time is, for example. I just think it looks great. So very pleased with that. Thank you very much, Garmin. And um, I hope that's given you a useful little tour of what that watch is all about, especially since Christmas is coming. Got any friends with boats? I'm sure they'd appreciate that one. Now, having just made that video, I've realised there's one more thing which I haven't shown, which is quite cunning. This top button, which is the light button here, 
if you press and hold that, you get a sub menu. Here we go. Now this is quick access to some useful functions. So again, we use these up and down buttons. We can go around like this, and you can see it's giving you things like the uh, battery saver. You can have a battery saver mode at the minute. It's got 13 days of life left, but you could increase that. Music controls are on here. Wallet, you can set this up so that you can make payments with it. Um, timers, alarm, so all this stuff, rather than having to go into the menu and through and down and find it, it's instant access straight away. And one particularly useful one is this, find my phone. If I press that, my phone is now bleeping, you can see it over there. And it's actually, I don't know how you can see this, uh, you've actually got like a little thing here which will point you in the right direction to where the phone is. There we go, that's killed that. And the final thing is this. Now when you get an, any kind of alert, like an email or whatever else, the watch will actually vibrate on your wrist. But this is a do not disturb, it'll stop it from doing it. So if you do that, then it won't vibrate on your wrist, so it's very useful. Um, there is also, you program it with when you're asleep and it won't do it automatically while you're asleep. So if you say like from, I don't know, 11 o'clock at night till 8 in the morning, it's a band at which it won't vibrate and wake you up. But as I say, if you want a nap in the afternoon, you can go into that one, put the Do Not Disturb on, and it won't vibrate and, uh, and annoy you or wake you up. So that's a useful thing. And in fact, if you go all the way around, that's a power button. So with that one, we can turn the whole watch off. As I say, it's a bit of a bonus video. There'll be another Yacht Tour coming up. Hopefully, if it gets uploaded tonight for tomorrow, the next Yacht Tour will be up the day after. So uh, stay tuned. And as ever, thank you so much for watching. Catch you on another one soon. Take care. Bye-bye.